What's poppin' everybody? It's me, Jazzy J, but don't worry, I'm not the one true host. I just have a special announcement before the actual episode begins, and Ben's here too. He just, he just, he let me do, do this part, thanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Figured, figured you could do the, like the grand lead in, you know? This, mm-hmm. it, it feels like a very, like, it feels like a, uh, a very J momentous occasion well, th- to, to celebrate. <laughs> well, th- thanks so much, although I think both of us are, are celebrating here because what we are announcing is that we uh, are going on tour. We with, are indeed. Yes, with our uh, our other podcast, Through the Griffin Door. We're calling it Through the Griffin Door. If you're unfamiliar with the podcast, it is a chapter by chapter read through book club style podcast of the entire Harry Potter series. And uh, we are doing a little mini East Coast tour later uh, this year in June. We're starting in Boston, then going to New York City, Philadelphia, and ending in Washington, D.C. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to be doing doing like live recordings of the episode. So if you're like there in person, you'll get to hear it for the very first time mm-hmm. before it goes out into the airwaves. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's also going to be like a Q&A and trivia, and there's like an opportunity for like a meet and greet ticket as well, if that's something you might be interested in. Tickets are on sale now. Yes, unless unless you're listening at like six in the morning when this just came out. But otherwise, if it's past 10, they're on sale now. Be sure to go and check them out. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, there should be links in the show notes uh, right now. So we hope to see you there. And now on with the, the one, the, the real one true host. Ha ha! Yay. What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host here with me today is my brother Jay who will be in every episode. All right, cut the crap, Ben. I need your opinion on something. Lay it on me. All right, so this past weekend. Yes, past weekend. We we had brunch we sure at did. our yeah. parents' house. Yeah, mom and dad's. And Delicious. I, the night before, had baked some oatmeal raisin cookies. Ah, oh, look at the little roll mm-hmm. on the R and a little emphasis. <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> I feel like I've become really good at rolling my R's. You know, I can't do it even at all. You I, can't at all. It's like, yeah, and this was my least favorite part about taking Spanish classes. Is I actually thought I was like doing medium-ish to okay at like getting the accent type thing yeah. right and everything, but could not do the R's to save my life, oh, and it would just make me so sad. This is like one of those things when, like, when I was in high school, people would be like, "Can you roll your R's?" And I'd be like, "Like, I don't think I knew what people meant, but all that I guess what they mean is." Like that, <laughs> like roll your arms. Right, right, like, right. can you really? Is pretty obvious, you know. <laughs> you're just making computer static or TV static. Is that not what you're doing? You're going. <laughs> that's what you're doing. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Let me try again. <laughs> Nailed it. Was that not it? No, uh, that was, you're basically, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes. What a romantic sounding sound that now, was. Now over I there. can add so much flair to my everyday discussions. There you go. I can right. say, oh, milk, crazy <laughs> cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, but so I I brought the raisin <laughs> cookies to uh, mom and dad's for everyone to try. And what did you think? Okay, I got I got a level with people. Yeah, <laughs> because and I didn't think that this would happen. I really didn't, you know. But you showed up. You had oatmeal raisin cookies. Yeah, they looked delicious Mm -hmm. as they always do yeah i mean in to to the credit of the oatmeal raisin cookie they always look great yeah that's that's no one's complaint no yeah no nobody's issue i mean in in really because i think there must be something about the raisin itself that that so closely resembles the far superior chocolate chip Mm -hmm. once melted yeah um they looked amazing i picked one up and i was like i i have to do it i have to i have to consume it you know solidarity for the content yeah well you know for that and and because you're my dear brother and you've eaten many of my own baked goods yeah i've suffered through them you have indeed (laughs) and so i was like okay okay i'm doing it here we go and i mean it's it's like one of those things where like have you seen the movie elemental like when wade is like eating the the like like the charred (laughs) like the charred nuts and he's like oh right yes (laughs) one of the funniest scenes of the whole movie uh so I'm, i'm going through that whole experience i chomp down it was actually really good. Yes, it was really good. I will, Amazing. I will absolutely credit you with having made what I can honestly say was the best oatmeal raisin cookie I've ever eaten. Well, that is what it. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you're you welcome. so much. You're welcome. I will say that um, 
uh, when I, I almost I'm not sure that they should be called oatmeal raisin cookies, but not like butter raisin cookies. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> was it mostly butter? I mean, when I remember, it, like I was looking at the recipe, and I go to get a stick of I was like, I need butter. Okay, got a stick out. And I'm like, how much does it need? And it's like, however many. And I look at the side, and I'm like, wait, is this only half? And I like I check the math like four times, and I'm like. I didn't put two whole sticks of butter in here. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. <laughs> so I did. Well, if it makes you feel any better at all, my my chocolate chip cookie yeah. recipe also calls for two whole yeah. sticks of butter. Perhaps so. I don't make enough cookies to understand what is an appropriate amount of butter. But anyway, yeah, I, uh, I made I was making them the night before. Beth had gone to like a uh, a bachelorette party of sorts or some, some. I don't know. She had like so many social engagements last weekend. My wife's very popular. Oh, and yeah, I know. You know I've, I've witnessed you, it. You're firsthand. familiar. You yeah, know her. Yeah. 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 Very bubbly person. Um, she was off doing something. So I'm sitting there watching the kids and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a great dad kids activity. Let's make cookies. Yeah, you know, I thought I thought this was going to be a huge hit. Huge hit <laughs> for making them. And they're like, what are you making? <laughs> like, what are you making? I was like, we're making oatmeal raisin cookies. And Luke, Luke, word for word goes, why would you tell me that? <laughs> that a boy, Luke. Goes, I just hate raisins. <laughs> I'm like, what? You don't want to help me make the cookies? Like, just no. <laughs> Like, why would you even, why would you even tell me it's happening? Right. Like, as if I could care at all. And then I'm like, Nick, Nate, do you guys want to help, help me make the oatmeal raisin cookies? They're just like, they're all appalled that I'm making them. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I was mean, like, come on now. You're only four. You don't know yet. <laughs> this is, you have a, uh, no, no, it's no. an instinctual reaction. I, that is what I learned is that it is an instinctual reaction to oatmeal raisin cookies. If before I thought it was a learned thing false this is just people's natural reaction yeah it is yeah. an acquired taste it takes only one tasting i think to acquire it no here's but, the thing i uh, think I, I i thought about this a lot after our big conversation the great raisin debate yeah, of 24 right and i i think the real the real source of this probably goes back to the delivery of the raisins in the first place yeah which i feel like when you're a kid and you're going to like summer camps or like elementary school or like whatever it's seems like there were occasions where treats were meant to be had where like the adults in charge decided that like hey you know what instead of candy we'll give them raisins raisins it's nature's it's basically candy. fruit yeah and it's, it's like, practically well, good for you i think i think that's exactly <laughs> it i think the problem is is that raisins were delivered in such a way where it was kind of like it was like wait 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 wait, no hold on wait what wait you, you thought you thought that giving us a treat included raisins right that, that this is a viable substitute for candy mm -hmm. and then and then fast forward in life more you you join the the Bo boy scouts or what have you and you're on your first backpacking outing and they're like yeah. hey guys we brought gorp and you're like what's gorp and it's like well it's trail mix but we call it gorp because that's fun it's fun and it's like okay sure what what's in what's in the trail mix and it's like oh well you're gonna love it there's like there's like peanuts and and m&ms and raisins and it's like wait a second what what was that one it's like hold on are are you putting in like a small, like a smaller percentage of, of M&Ms overall to try to like offset the, the inclusion of the raisin mm -hmm. in the trail mix? And, and, and I'm like, that is, that is the case. That's why they're doing it. You think, yeah, right. You so think it's so. Like, so I think, I think that there's a world where raisins kind of have this like overall branding problem. You know, it's like they're, they're like too frequently like being like snuck in, you know, it's like, it's like they're trying to like make like, like raisins fun. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, stop. <laughs> just like, what if we put them in cookies? We'll just like make it fun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is what right. I mean. It's yeah. like, it's like, okay, cookies are already not healthy. Let's not try to like, like offset let's, let's not try to like be like hey okay we'll use raisins instead of chocolate that'll make it better right it's like no mm -hmm. you're already eating a cookie you may as well just eat the cookie you may as well just eat the you cookie. know it's yeah, like, you're I mean, right raisins do have a branding problem enter j enter j we're gonna save the raisins you know what you know what though on the complete opposite end of this this i think is why uh, raisin bran is so successful because they're not they're not masquerading as health food. It's bran. I mean, they're not masquerading as like we're better than we are. It's raisins and bran. Well, that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. So I feel like this is a this is a prime example because bran by itself one awful name for any food that you're supposed <laughs> to eat. You know what? This is what. See, you're right because like you have 
raisin cookie. It's like raisin is the worst word. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. But you go raisin brand. It's like raisins sound amazing. It's because the yeah. only <laughs> thing I'm less likely to eat than raisins is brand cereal, right? Like if it was like, <laughs> this is a box of only brand flakes. It would be like, what? Yeah. Why would anybody even make such food? They sell it. It exists. Okay. Well, yeah. they shouldn't, but I do think that this is exactly why Raisin Bran does in fact work because yeah. they allowed it to be the star of its show right. instead of trying to incorporate it into a show in which it has no business. Well, I mean, you say it, it appears to have no business. It appears to on, have no business on reception, but of course, then once you take the delicious buttery cinnamony bite of a cin- of a uh, an oatmeal raisin cookie, I like can- you're transported <laughs> into a soft warm hug of no deluxe fashion. I even ate and enjoyed the cookie and as you were describing this right now it's making my insides literally physically revolt. I'm like stop it. Stop ruining cookies. I'm not ruining cookies. Warm buttery. Yeah. Oh man, it's mm-hmm. like don't even get I mean, yeah. The, the, the some- true magic of an oatmeal raisin cookie Ben is the cinnamon inside because after a chocolate chip cookie. Cools oh, you on. did not just. You <laughs> did not just. After a chocolate chip cookie cools. You take a bite. It's enjoyable, of course, but it doesn't warm your soul. It has to remain warm for that. The cinnamon inside the oatmeal raisin cookie will warm your insides for you as you enjoy it, no matter the temperature of the cookie or the room it's in. I mean, <laughs> Are you trolling me? I'm not trolling you. <laughs> what are you doing? I I can't. I can't. I feel like you're baiting me. <laughs> I feel I feel as though I'm being I feel like you are you have like a like a carrot on the end of a <clears throat> stick and you're getting ready to try to get me to jump off a cliff with it or something. Dude, we made a video some time ago about uh the scene in Frozen where Kristoff and Anna fall into the snow and like are fine because it's like powder snow. Yeah, it's like I yeah. think Anna goes up to the edge and she's like, it's a hundred foot drop. And then Kristoff is like, it's 200. And I'm like, Kristoff, I know you know the wilderness, but like, how well? You're going to eyeball that? You're yeah. going you to eyeball exactly 200? There's no texture down there to give you any. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just white fluffy it's snow. Just white fluff, man. Yeah, anyway, but continue. Anyway, he also then says that like it's like however many feet of fresh powder courtesy of one uh, Elsa. Yeah, ice queen, not, ice queen, not fresh powder queen. Yeah, not fresh. Yeah, ice queen, right? Making it snow, making it sleet, more right? Like yeah, freezing exactly. rain. Yeah, okay. yeah, kind of slippery black ice kind of situation. Yeah. Not, not like snowman snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apparently Clearly. it is. Yeah. But anyway, they fall uh, and they are fine when they hit the bottom because the the snow was fluffy enough to catch them. And like we made a video where. Uh, apparently to a certain extent this is true like there is enough like fresh powder snow you can fall from tremendous height and uh, it will catch you uh, to some extent yeah, yeah yeah I think I think the really extremely famous example that we use is that there was a World War two pilot that basically had an engine failure or or was was destroyed while in flight and had to evacuate the plane and didn't have a parachute yeah and so it was basically just in a state of free fall yeah and upon landing in this fresh snow actually survived survived the yeah. fall. Yeah. yeah, but so we were just um, <clears throat> I was just looking through my messages on Instagram and someone had sent me a video of this guy who was skiing and like comes like he can't quite tell that there's like a big drop off like cliff type thing approaching. Yeah, and he gets near the edge and is like, oh, no, and like tries to break. But like his skis like just slip and go over the edge and he's like wearing a GoPro and he's I mean, he is straight up falling. Yeah, like I mean, it is like, oh, no. And then like uh, he hits the he hits the ground and gets up and he's just like, I mean, he says thank you to the camera like oh my, like I have been given a second chance at life but like he survives the fall like completely okay it's unbelievable like, it was like an oh, yeah. I was like yeah I'm like I was watching like oh my gosh I'm about to watch someone die no I can't yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah no that's that's horrible <laughs> but yeah I mean thank goodness yeah that is all right oh yes I absolutely mean, yeah anyway that just reminded me of that endlessly mind-blowing yeah endlessly mind- yeah so uh, it turns <clears throat> out uh well don't test it but yeah soft soft landings available yeah soft you know. landings available and uh you know if your friends make oatmeal raisin cookies you know just go and enjoy them you know no one's gonna judge you for it I might judge them a little bit. I mean, it's like I think I think that like I can have walked away from your your cookie experience yeah. and been pleasantly surprised. Yeah. However, I I still I mean even even if I knew like I mean there is something baked into my brain pun yeah. absolutely intended yeah. that like there is something 
like like it is it is some version of like an atrocity and and, and, <laughs> atrocity. and, and like and this is I, I don't know what it is i don't know what it is it's like it's like i might even know like no i like jay's cookies like the like his his oatmeal raisin cookies are in fact uh not just edible but in fact enjoyable mm-hmm. and yet i still feel like if you're like yeah i'm gonna bring my my famous oatmeal raisins i'd be like no, no don't do it come on mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. like I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to like work up the gumption all of, this is this is honestly like when you introduce people to the glorious art that is cliff jumping as yeah. long as we're merging these examples in yeah. such fine form it's kind of like you know you you find yourself overlooking the edge of like a rock ledge to jump out into uh the nice re- receptive water below right yes from, from what is otherwise nice an, soft water uh, nice soft water <laughs> nice soft like a hug i think some might describe yeah, it uh-huh. um <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it's the type of thing where it's like, I've seen people go, I've seen themselves work up the courage and do it each time. And each time they're kind of like, Ben, I told you I would do it once. I did it one time. We jumped, we're done. We're getting back in the boat. Let's go and do other activities now. And I feel like this is exactly like eating the raisin cookie. It's like, it's like, it's not that I don't, it's not that I think that like something catastrophic will happen. I know I'll survive the fall yeah. of eating the cookie, yeah. but I'm still going to have to work myself up again to do it. Even though you enjoyed it. Even though I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't change the fear that maybe that was a one-time thing or, right. or maybe I'll slip and fall while eating the oatmeal raisin cookie and then just, just like hit every rock on my way down to the mm-hmm. surface of the water. Yeah. I've really merged the metaphor. You really have. Time. Yeah. yeah no I'm, doubt. Now, I'm now assuming I'm eating the oatmeal raisin cookie on the edge of a cliff. Right. Yeah. They're yeah. basically the same experience. Ba- basically the same experience. Right. Thrill seeking behavior. Have have you eaten an oatmeal <laughs> raisin cookie before? Reminder, people, it's scary, not dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, of course, you're allergic to oatmeal, raisin, flour, butter, any of those types. Yeah, of any things. of those, case, any of those know, sorts and, of things. You know, proceed with caution. Right. I um I did eventually convince um Nate and Luke to try some. Yeah. And they did both actually enjoy enjoy them quite a bit. Were they dismayed? They were not. No, yeah, they no. were. They enjoyed it. It was good. Although while I was making it, I had the batter ready and like you know like the the just which is you know it's all the brown sugar and the cinnamon and the uh, like all all the good stuff you want in there. I didn't even put a raisin in there. I was like, Luke, you got to try this batter. It is insane. It's so good. I mean, he's just like. I mean, he looks at me like I am crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm bonding with Luke right now. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to give him a high five next time I see him. I mean, it's basically just like sugar batter, you know? Like, it's, of course. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I cookies was cookies are good for a reason. I know. Jay. Like, I like, was eating it. I was like, this is so good. Uh, and I give it to him. He's just like, he pulls out like what, like one tiny oat off the off the spoon, like puts it in his mouth. He goes, I hate it. <laughs> I was like, there's no way you're just trolling me right now, bro. You didn't even taste it. Yeah. 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 It's okay. Anyway, I mean, you've been trolling me this whole time, but so. that's okay. Nate liked it. Luke eventually ate one. Also liked it. So you I, know, I will say that I, I was, I was, I was very impressed with your baking skills. So I thought you. you did a very amazing job, and I was also glad that even though I have such strong opinions about this particularly weak thing, <laughs> um, I, I was, I was like excited that the conversation itself spurred you to go and engage in in some baking related behaviors. Yeah. Because it seems like it, this is like one of those things where I feel like uh, baking is is probably a prime example of something that's like people like it, people might believe it's it's like 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 uh what, what's the word i'm looking for um uh, more challenging or something but then it's like once you get in there it's like oh man now we're just rocking and rolling now, now we're just, just having it. a good time like well, it's been the, the power to bake is in all of us yeah it's been on my mind to do it since we had our discussion and like i've wanted to make uh there's many a time i want to make cookies but like i felt like for particularly for oatmeal raisin like i really really had to like seize the moment yeah when the opportunity arose DM. yeah because it was one of those things where like if like if if even <clears throat> I almost had to do it by surprise, you know, like if I had like suggested making these cookies to Beth, like, hey, I'm going to make these like wh- I don't think she would have been down for it up front because one, she also would be like, why are you making oatmeal raisin cookies? It's like we have chocolate <laughs> chips, yeah, I know. Like, we yeah. have, which actually we didn't, oh, but all right, well, that's but weird. whatever. Um, but like and then also it would be like, I no, don't make like delicious baked treats in the house. That's just going to attempt to be. You're not even going to be here all day. You know, I'm going to have to walk past them <laughs> 20 times and eventually break down and eat them. And, you know, it's not, you know, not not great for uh, good eating habits. Sure. sure, yeah. sure, sure. So I was like, you know what? One, she would not want me to make them. And two, she would want me to make a different kind of cookie. And so uh, I'm just going to have to make them 
while so you you're had, not you here. Had, you had to sneak <laughs> bake. I, know, I, had, I had to have a sneak bake. <laughs> this is, this is like, like such an unusual kind of story to tell where it's like, okay, so I had to wait until my, like my wife, you know, she was out at a bachelor party or bachelorette party. So, yeah. you know, like that's the baseline and people are like, okay, what'd you do? It's like, well, I needed for her to be out of the house in order to engage in this particularly risky behavior. <laughs> exactly. And everybody's like, Okay, what did you do? Well, let me tell you, everyone at the house, I, I did meet resistance. <laughs> yeah, they, people were, they were not, they were not as on board. There was some convincing <laughs> I, that was necessary, uh, some preliminary tasting that happened that didn't go well. Yeah. Um, you know, people just, you know, it, it, it's not what you would expect. Um, it's like, yeah, like, I made cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Oatmeal raisin. Oh. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then people are like, I thought you were engaging in some type of other behaviors, but but yeah, no. You know, no. But no, just the the next worst thing. There. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beth ate them as well and also enjoyed them. I know. So I know. Overall, <laughs> I would say they were a success, and I'm glad I made them, and I'll probably make them again at some point. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, but I also <laughs> like just making regular chocolate chip cookies too. Thank goodness. Yeah. Thank goodness for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Good. Good to know. Good to know. Good yeah. to be on the lookout. But I swear, the one thing you must promise me you will not do is bring a plate that has mixed in oatmeal raisin and chocolate chip cookies oh. on side of the same plate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, like where it's like where it like is you on. You don't know. It's like it's like a minefield in there, man. Who knows? Don't do this to me. Don't anyway. So at some point in time, people are going to be like, they're going to have to rename the podcast because all they do at this point in time is basically dunk on snickerdoodle and oatmeal raisin cookies. Snickerdoodles suck, Ben. <laughs> I'm going to make some. <laughs> If you can save snickerdoodles, good for you. Go. You know what? I'm, you know what? You were talking earlier about having like a repulsive reaction to something. <laughs> I can feel my insides like, no, don't get sucked into this again, Jay. No, you've given snickerdoodles so many chances. The people in the comments are like, snickerdoodles are amazing. Don't kid yourself. Why They're are they? the worst. Yeah, there's just no, there's no acceptable reason for snickerdoodles to not include nuts and chocolate and caramel. I know. You know? I know. Oh, snickerdoodles came first. Doesn't matter. Doesn't They've matter. been super. Proceeded. Yeah, yeah, no. It's like you got, you gotta, you gotta keep up with the times. Keep up with the times, you know? Snickerdoodle. It's like, it's like Blockbuster came before Netflix, but that doesn't make Blockbuster better. I know. You know exactly, what I mean? You know right? what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I yeah. get it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So rebrand yourself. There. Yeah. Transition. Transition. <laughs> All right. So interestingly, you mentioned that Beth was out at a uh, at, at a variety of different social gatherings yeah. and whatnot last in the, in this past week. Correct. Um, this is this is sort of interesting. So I, uh, you, uh, w would you say in general that you would believe me to be an extrovert? Uh, yes, I would. I would say that of the <laughs> two of us, you are more extroverted. Okay. However, <clears throat> what I find to be kind of interesting this this is like only just dawned on me because I this is like. I, I, I had never properly ever given this a thought. Like I, I'm like, there is no doubt. I mean, if you've listened to the show for this long, or mm -hmm. if you've just spent, you know, 13 minutes with me at all, yeah. you'll be aware of the fact that I'm an anxious person. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's basically like, like the key part of my DNA. Oh, I don't know if that's true. Yeah. It's pretty woven in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I don't know. I feel like it's only been so present in like the more recent of the years. Okay. I wouldn't like I've known you for, you know, the last well, how old are you? 34, 34 years. Yeah, you have known me yeah, the whole I've time. I've known you that yeah. I've known you the whole time. And I would say that like at least thirty one of those years I wouldn't have used the word anxious to describe you even at all. Oh really? Yeah. yeah no, so I really. wouldn't no, just not it wouldn't have even crossed my mind. So this is this is really like a recent like a like a like a breakthrough or a break backwards or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's a change <laughs> it's a change something happened something. Um, or maybe you've always been this way you've just gotten like worse at hiding it or <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really what i'm learning in therapy it's like ben it's okay to let people know that you're anxious about things yeah. just talk about it all just the time talk about it no problem <laughs> <laughs> permission received <laughs> um no but what's what's funny is that for the most part like whenever people uh have talked to me before because because i'm pretty open about it so people have like sort of been uh open in in return one of the things that people often say is that they have like social anxiety, like this idea of like going to uh, gatherings like a party and, and yeah. such like that. Yeah, like the the <clears throat> sort of like concern about being in, in those types of equations. And because I would normally even like you know sort of like identify as or or even just like be able to like observe my own behaviors being that of uh, someone who is uh, extroverted, I like 
I, I've always kind of been like, no, like I know that I'm highly, like I'm a highly anxious person. I like, I have like concerns about like, you know, things happening and like ways that would like make my life out of my control or something like that. But I don't know that I'm specifically like anxious in social settings. And then I, like I started thinking about it over the weekend and I was like, man, I don't know if I totally think that that is true. Oh like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I think that there's a chance that like m- maybe just like a little bit, like I don't, I don't think it's nearly as like severe as like other things that like I've dealt with. Um, but I was like, maybe, maybe I do have some amount of, of, of this thing going on, like, or like, like part partially, like what's like, what makes me like hesitant to like go and do even, even like board game nights. I'm like, maybe this is like, maybe that's like a small, a small portion of like what's, what's happening to me. Like it's less the game and more the social. <clears throat> well, maybe it's, it's entering into a social environment where there is also a, like skills. Mm-hmm. And I think like not knowing where my own skills might rank, um, relative to the people that are also in that situation. Mm -hmm. I think that's something like I actually do have like some qualms with like, like historically, like, you know, we've been like, like uh, cyclists or climbers or runners, you know, like we've, we've done like, you know, like our our various activities and I love going with like my core group yeah, and I love going to like locations that like I know well. Um, But this was always one of those things like where if somebody outside of that orbit was like, Hey, would you want to go like, you know, go for a ride next weekend or something? I'd be like, Oh, how can I hmm. get it's like I like you as a person I'd love to hang out with you if you if you were asking me to go grab a beer yeah. I'd be at 100% in no problem at all however however right, I like, don't yeah. know I like you I like biking I've been there but no there's no that all of it together oh. it's like I, I could I certainly couldn't <clears throat> I couldn't mix the recipe of person I like with activity I like at location I like like right. that doesn't sound right to me right yeah um but the thing is is that if you say like like otherwise like would you just want like like if I were making the decision do I want to go biking next week and like oh location I like activity I like yeah these are things I like it's like the thing that makes the difference is having the person I like there who I don't know how my skills equate to right does that make sense it does make sense yeah so yeah. anyway this is this is now something i'm going to try to be more aware of mm. and and see if i can overcome okay you know real david and goliath so you want to go to you want to come to game night is what i'm hearing <sighs> i really set myself up for that <laughs> one didn't i a little bit <laughs> <laughs> are you hosting a nearby game night i mean i could be hosting a game night as uh, you know as soon as later this evening later. <laughs> <laughs> if you want <laughs> like like three hours you know right? that mean, work for you you, know, you want to get you want to come over at like eight the kids are probably down you can bring addy whatever it's fine this is this is once <laughs> again even even in my head i'm like i'm like oh, oh are we playing halo you know it's like okay because that's person i like game i like mm-hmm. location i know yeah you know it's like okay that that like them I'm, I'm ticking some boxes here you know I mean, like I've got halo at the house for sure i know we've been talking about it we how, sure have how has your halo resurgence been going oh man great question ben i would say tremendously tremendously yes, okay so good to know good to know i uh, i brought uh, i brought the the xbox home the other day uh we have like the master chief collection yeah um and i i fired it up and i was like i w- i logged in and it has you know halos one through five plus the prequel game in there okay um and like i was like where where to begin where to begin i just decided boom right from the beginning halo one let's do it uh it's definitely the game i played the most okay growing up and like i just fired it up and i totally forgot what the first level even was and it's like it has been such a joy because like for as much halo as you play like a lot of a lot of what was so great about halo was like the multiplayer aspect of it hard agree like people would like it was the I feel like it was the game in my childhood that people would like come together to play the most, even though you could do like, you know, it was the game that also I feel like pioneered a lot of like online play. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I would agree um, with that as well, too. But yeah. like for Halo yeah. one, you really if you wanted to play with other people, you could like hook up the Xboxes and have like a LAN party or even just having four people in a room was like more than enough to have a total party. Yes. You know, it was a total blast. Um, so played a lot of that. But I do remember going through the campaign quite a bit as well. And that's mostly what I'm doing now. I'm not really trying to do multiplayer. I just want to just want to play through. Just get just just relive it all naturally. But it's find those skills. Yeah. But what's so fun about it is like rediscover it's like like for all the things that like I experienced so much like I have like such a good memory of all the time yeah and it's like there are like if you showed me anything from Halo I could probably tell you like what it was or what it did or what it was called or whatever but like 
like I don't have like an active memory of it. So it's like playing through the game. It's like it's very fun and nostalgic to be like, oh, like I remember like the grunts and the elites, but I got to like the third level when you're first introduced to like the hunters oh, and they're yeah. like the, you know, big bad covenant, you know, soldiers or whatever. And if they hit you, you're pretty much dead. You got him in the back. Yeah, you got to like you got to do this weird like backwards run and they'll lunge at you and you sort of just like turn around. And I think if you have the pistol, you could like one shot them in the back. Wow, which is like this. I remember that. But so it's like I they like appear and I'm like I, they had completely exited my brain. But as soon as I show up, I'm like, I remember these guys. You're called hunters and like my fingers like instinctually know like the same little like here's the turnaround move and and you're gone. And you know, it's like like my, it's funny to me the things like your hands remember about doing stuff. I know. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's like how was their muscle memory from something I haven't done since you were probably like 14, right? And it's just like you're just sort of looking around and it's like, oh, yeah, it's like I, I couldn't have like it's none of the stuff is like active in my brain, but it's like, yes, that's a scarab and a warthog and a ghost and the scorpion and that's a hunter and foe hammer the pelicans. It's like these are all like they're all like words. I just like like it feels like, oh, yeah, they're all like they're all like deep inside of me and they're all just still there. Oh, and it's that's like so very good. fun. That's so just good. like remember it all. And it's like, oh, yeah, let's go, let's go get them. And then, you know, I don't know. The, the music is so good. Like, I can't believe how much it hypes me up while I'm playing the game. And it's like because it's this weird mix of like rock and then this sort of like, you know, orchestral like oh music and I know yeah, like, yeah yeah it's like it, it's really funny <laughs> to me how like the halo music is exactly like that like it's, yeah. it almost feels like it could be something that would be like played in like a church or something and it's right. like like when you hear it it's like no way no, man, man like, let's like, go get me going. where's like a red bandana I can tie around my 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 forehead I know I know so part <laughs> of me so I'm um, yes I've just been having an absolute blast playing it and I'm like I'm I'm like am I gonna play through all five halos like maybe I will we'll see what kind of commitment are we talking yeah, about here I do you think yeah, you'll watch the you- show after Afterwards, I, uh, maybe it. I feel like it's one of those things where they like the 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 Alexa can hear you, and it's like suddenly every time I log into Paramount Plus, it's like Halo, and you're like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay, <clears throat> you're listening. I, I got you. It. I got it. I understood. <clears throat> yeah, you're just you know, all of a sudden this is being promoted. I get it. I don't know. Maybe like a new season just came out or something, but and it's just weird timing. Or maybe it's because a new season came out and there's been like advertising around that I haven't noticed, but it's like seeped into my subconscious or something. That's the real question. It's right, like, yeah. Was your Alexa listening to you, or was the reason that you wanted to play Halo again because of this, right? Like, yeah, like like somehow like, it was like something get to it you. It like permeated like the yeah. airwaves just enough to be like, okay, okay, wait, right. well, you, know you know what? I myself, Jonathan Carlin, I'm thinking for the first time ever, I should be playing some more Halo. And indeed, and, I am. And it's like, ha he played right into our hands. Exactly. Just Except that a, I'm just playing a game I already bought. So <laughs> that's that's yeah. Good so point. I didn't spend yeah. any new money with you, <laughs> Halo. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> just a long time <laughs> ago. Just but, a long time ago, and yeah. we bought it like five times across like five consoles because we had a big land party and you know whatever. Yeah, they got so us pretty good. They got us. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. Anyway, it's fine. That's okay. That's okay. It's fine. It's been a blast. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it has been it has been making me desperately want to get another land party. I going mean, once absolutely. Again. I, let's do that. I, I think we need to. I think we need to. I, I personally need to go and like refine my skills. This is like one of those things where I was talking to you about it a little bit. And I was like, whichever stream Halo. And I was like, I can't decide like, you know, like for for like what we do for the most like we've we played on the past we've never like shot away from playing in the past or anything like that but like we've always like all most of the gaming we've ever done has always been like sort of like mario kart like it's, it's always right. matched like sort of like the very like like family friendly stuff that we tend to put like out into the world right and then it's, it's like there's a part of me it's like what would the world be like where like what we did was like stream halo or right. something like that yeah. like this is a very <laughs> different kind of it is i you mean know, it vibe. just it is like a first person shooter it's like i would i mean I mean, it is a little bit different than other first person. Like, I mean, even like Fortnite, like I don't think for some reason Fortnite feels like more not it's it's not like family friendly or anything like you know you're still just like shooting people and stuff right right you know yeah, yeah. um but like even in halo like you're never actually like i guess if you did like multiplayer you would be like firing at other human beings right um or even but like if you're just playing the campaign like at no point are you ever like against the humans that's you know? true everything you're you're firing against are like sci-fi invented alien creatures right right yeah. that's a good point that's a good point yeah so, so there, there you go that. that's the question so we'll have to see wait mm-hmm. wait and see if jay ends up becoming a, a way know. would you guys want to see some halo streaming is the question that is the question be sure to let us know popcorn culture pot at gmail.com yeah, you know very relevant <laughs> halo one streaming these days yes yes there you go I, I'm not mean, playing be- on legendary or anything you know i'm just going through a normal 
<laughs> well, you mean you got to work up to you it. You got to work up know? to it. Yeah, that, we'll play through all five games at normal, and then we'll go back and do it all heroic. And, yeah. and, and then just keep keep working our way up. Yeah, until we're, until, just do legendary. Until we're know? exceedingly good. Exactly. And then we'll have a Halo land party, and I'll just like wreck everyone. It'll be awesome. I, that, this is the thing. This is what's so weird. I mean, because I was just talking about like doing activities with people. It's like there is something that's very different for me when I'm the one facilitating. It's like I can show up, and it's like I'm, I know I'm not the best person here. Like, like, like I'm probably in the bottom tier of people here at this particular thing. But right. I feel like there's there's like a safety to being like able to be the person who like provided the opportunity right. for all the rest of the people to be there. So right. it's like, you know, it's like I'm not very good at it, but at least yeah. I set it up. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like, oh yeah, it's, it's okay if Ben's the worst and he's on your team because we wouldn't even be playing without Ben. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So yeah. I'm still playing I'm still providing something to the people in my life. Exactly. Yeah. This is this is like the this is like Ben math. They're yeah. Like, this is like the mental math. I'm I'm like I'm grappling with all the time and I'm like the, sometimes I'm like it makes so much sense in my head and then when I say it out loud I'm like oh that was that's sort of a ridiculous way to look at it isn't it uh-huh. like that there that there would be a difference well even with Ben math it's not really it's not like you're ever hosting game night though that's a good point that's yeah. a good point but I have hosted the land parties that's that true past, I guess so, so. yeah there's yeah. that so that's that's like the occasional once every like four and a half years game night that I host right yeah <laughs> <laughs> never never I think, I think in nine years two game nights counts for something mm-hmm. well we got to get one on the books it sounds like okay sounds good get sounds some good. halo going there you go transition transition okay so we had a cool thing happen this week we did have a cool we thing ha- well and it, you know what I think we had a cool thing happen this week. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. It's no, I know, but like, have have you and I both not been entirely sure whether or not there, it's been cool? There has been um, some like uh, maybe confusion about like what it meant or whatever. Yeah, I think more it was like I didn't quite know like until we were there, and then it was like, oh, actually, this is pretty cool. I mean, it, yes, yeah. like yes. Once <clears throat> once experiencing it, it was very cool. But it was, and, and people are going to be like, okay, can you tell us what the thing was? Um, but yes, yeah, so we, about. About a year ago, we had um, uh, someone reach out to us from the like Virginia state government. His name's Brian. Mm-hmm. What's up, Brian? Shout out to <clears throat> Brian. And he said that he would like to uh, submit us for what is called a commending resolution from the Virginia House of Delegates, uh, which is correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I said all the right words. Yes. In the right order and everything. Yeah. Um, so, the, you know, it's like one of those things where you're like, well, that sounds it sounds neat. Yeah. Like that sounds good. Like, okay. Uh, you know, but I think our original point of contact may have been like last year in like April or May. So it had been, it had been quite some time since this idea had first been presented to me, Yeah, you know, or to us. And, and I was kind of like, yeah, that sounds good. Yep. Yes. We were in, how do we do this? from here <laughs> like yeah what 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 where what happens next um and so you know i guess there was some stuff happening behind the scenes over the course of the past year or whatever and then so earlier inside of this year i got like an email being like hey like we're we're pretty much like doing the thing like yeah you've you guys, been approved <laughs> you, you have been approved and and so like th- even then it's kind of like one of these things where it's like okay so basically yeah, as far as i know the state of virginia is going to be recognizing us for like our YouTube and sort of like fundraising related efforts. Yeah. Um, with what is called, yeah, this commending resolution. Right. And so it's like, you know, I feel like I'm trying to like, like tell people what, what it is we're doing or even like telling like our like our office mates because we we're like going to be out of office one day so we can right. drive up to richmond well to- yeah that's like yeah so do you guys want to like come you know be be here for it like drive up to the state capitol and you know come to the the capitol <laughs> building or whatever and you're like right yeah you're like okay <laughs> yeah we yeah we want what to, is it we yes we want to do that yeah do we need to do anything like are we like are we properly prepared what like what, what do we wear yeah right <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so you're, it was, it was just a really kind of like cool and overall very interesting process because yeah. So yesterday morning we got up at like 6 AM, you know, our time we, we left, uh, for the, you know, like three hour drive up to Richmond yep, to yep. get there, you know, by, by like nine or so, uh, like we go and like we meet our people who had like, you know, submitted us for this thing. Um, and you know, they, they sort of like take us up and like, you know, you're in this, like the capital of the state of Virginia and there you're in like the gallery looking down on like all of the delegates who yeah. then like are doing their proceedings and sort of like signing things into 
you know, bill Law, and, yeah. And, yeah, stuff like that. And you're like, well, this is pretty wild. Like, yeah. because, this is very official. Because that's, that's the other verbiage that they had used at some point in time. It's like, would you guys like to come to like witness it be signed? Like to, like, yeah, to watch the bill be the bill signed? Signing, yeah. yeah. And we're like, wait, a, like a what? Bill? Um, I, know, was, I think I think what was getting in our own way all day was like, like our own level of imposter syndrome. It definitely I think was. That was sort of yes. it. It was like, this can't be that big of a deal because there's no way that we would be like succeeding in that sort of way. Right. And right. then, you know, you get there and it's just like they're they're doing it and, you know, like you're standing there and you're like it was like as it was happening, like, we're being like recognized by the state government of like the Virginia state government as like is like recognizing like everything we've done on YouTube. Like like in a very official way. And I was yes. like, this is like, this is actually like really cool. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. You know? So we're like, <laughs> it felt like, like such an otter. He really did. Yeah. Yes. You're like standing on this like upper balcony and you're like, you're, you're, you know, kind of like, like looking, looking in and everything that's happening. And like our, our local delegate is the one who like, you know, stood up to like read like our whole, our whole spiel and like, you know, like gestures up to us, to like recognize us and like all the, all the, you know, 100 Virginia state delegates, like all turn in their chairs and they like look up and applaud. And you're like, like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it, so it was, it was just a really kind of surreal uh, and cool experience. And, and, you know, like, but yeah, the, the imposter syndrome was, was just definitely overflowing the whole day. It was right. Like, and and I, I think I just kept thinking something was just going to happen and it was just going to be like, Oh, sorry guys. Turns out we can't actually do it. And it's going to be like, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Like I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even know if I wanted to anyway, I was still kind of confused what, <clears throat> what it was, but, but thank you for considering us, you know? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, so it was, it was really cool though. It was, it was definitely like a, also just like a very interesting glimpse into sort of like, uh, like local politics. Yeah. A little bit more like state level government proceedings and stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like, you know, this is, this is something where it's like whenever there's like elections and stuff like that, like all the, all the like really big races, you know, it's like you, like, like you can't not pay attention to them. They're like in front of you, no matter where you look. Yeah. And there, there's always like lots of, um, you know, like a lot of times, like the, the conversations attached to every single election, you know, are sort of on like battleground points that, you know, right, every, everybody yeah. feels extremely strongly on. Yeah. They're, it's like you get on Twitter and there's nothing <laughs> but just people yelling about everything. And it's like, it, it is like, ugh, it feels very overwhelming and like, anxious like yeah angst inducing yes yes exactly yeah. you know and and there's also like you know that that sort of like general belief or or sense towards you know uh like like politicians and sort of like that whole realm and world and lobbyists and you know all the all the things that go on and stuff but like it was it was strange just to just to actually be there in the room with it where like it's odd to describe the the I mean of course like the we were there for the very beginning for like what was happening was like recognitions similar to our own yeah but the like <clears throat> to me like my read on the room is I was like this is like a very warm atmosphere I've, I mean it, it did feel that way just like you know they had all the people from one party sitting on one side and all the people from the other party on the other side but it was like everyone was just chumming it up everywhere everywhere yeah know? yeah it's, and it's, it was like every little thing they voted on that while we were there it was like a hundred to zero yes yeah and like, it was like, like you know i think when you like watch the news like your belief is that at all times like all politics is just a like brutal bare knuckle fight no one gives up a vote for anything nothing ever gets passed ever because favors and under the table dealings and backdoor like sign like you know this is right, what this right. is what it, it feels like it's how it's presented that everything is like you know cutthroat and ruthless and they're like yeah like like th that's the stuff you'll see in the news but like 95 percent is like uh everyone agreed on it and we pass all sorts of stuff all the time and it's like <laughs> right and like yeah. everyone just like reads and it's like yeah this makes sense so let's definitely do it and right yeah right, yeah so it's it, it's definitely it was it was very um like i i think it inspired some hope you know yeah like, like yeah. i think it's easy to have like a like a rather you know negative sensation and stuff but um so anyway yeah i mean it was it was it was just neat to be there it was neat to be in the room i feel like it, it sort of like changed my own perspective a little bit to like this this like corner of something that like i don't even know if like mentally i had like written off in some capacity as mm -hmm. like a like i don't really know how to approach it i don't really know how to get involved with it i don't really know like what to think about it because it all just feels like such complicated soup 
Yes. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. And, and like, which by the way is a phrase I feel like I've found myself like reaching for more and more often. Yeah. But what I mean is just largely that it's like, there's a lot of ingredients and they don't always go together necessarily. Mm. And what you end up with is this like slurried concoction. Right. Yeah. AKA soup. AKA soup. Well, soup yeah. typically does go together. <laughs> well, it typically does. Yeah. But that's, that's the thing is that I would have said that most of these things would be soup that I didn't want any part of like, right, yeah. like oatmeal raisin soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? You I see what it? you yeah, did yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, full circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right, right. Hilarious. Thanks, yeah. thanks, yeah. thanks. I think when people say something is like soup, they're saying it's like it would be impossible to like um, re like uh, to to separate the items again. Yeah, no, in and, a but, way, and like, and it's all <clears throat> intertangled in an almost un like. D- on a, a way in which it is impossible to untangle the strings from each other. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I think I, I think that's a good way to put it, too, because I think a lot of times um, like some of the issues that I find myself struggling with, like for the most part, uh, like this is something like where it's it's hard because I, it probably ends up being almost a good analogy for politics themselves, mm-hmm. where it's like, I think a lot of times I will be trying to solve a problem and you are unfortunately at the mercy of hearing me talk about it, usually pretty relentlessly because it's almost all my brain can like work on mm-hmm. is trying to like trace the pathways back and forth and upside down and under and in and out and like, yeah. how do we, okay, so in order to solve that thing, we need to talk to this person, which we need to be, we need this person to cooperate in order for that to be even okayed in the first place. And then if we're going to want that to happen, we're going to need like these seven other people to completely change their opinions in the first place. And that's how we're going to have to get through the whole mess. Uh-huh. So it's like, I think for the most part in my life, I am like, like, I actually think it, like, I like problem solving. Like, I think that it's something that like I do a lot of yeah. and most problems are not hard to solve. Yeah. But then I think me myself gets caught on like six problems that I absolutely can't solve that basically become like the obsession of my life. I see. And well, yeah, I remember. So I don't know if this is helpful or not, but I do remember like a situation like this in uh, my past. Back when I worked at the, bur- the the concert venue. Hey, look at you go. For the bingo board there. Wow. Well done. Um, Where in I was uh, we had we had Jerry Seinfeld coming to the building. I've heard of him. Yeah, you've heard of him. Yeah, you know of yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was going to perform. He's, the, he's in the B movie. He's in the B movie. Yeah, okay, that's what yeah. he's most known. He's, for. <laughs> okay, that's what I would have said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had Seinfeld coming to the building, and it was a theater show. So I was the one like in charge of doing the marketing for that one. Um, and I was like going back and forth with the promoter, and you know we were trying to decide you know what ads we wanted to place for um, you know radio and TV and print and billboards and all that stuff. Yeah. And um, I <clears throat> uh, we got to it was for the, specifically the print version. Like they said they want they they told me they wanted to spend like X number of dollars and have ads run on these like three days or something. And I was like, OK, great. And I went and talked to my person at the Roanoke Times and they were like, oh, I actually have a deal running right now. Would you be interested in that? And I was like, I don't know. It seems like pretty good. Maybe let me go check with the promoter. And I sent it back to the promoter and I was like, OK, I talked to the Roanoke Times person. They said uh, we can actually do this and get this many ads. And they said, perfect. And I was like, great. So I just ran it exactly you know, the way it was. And then like, you know, month later, the ads are supposed to run. Right. And like they're, you know, that I get an email from the promoter saying like, why didn't, uh, shouldn't there be an ad in the Sunday paper? And I was like, oh, but no, because remember I sent you this deal and we were doing that. And they were like, I said, I want an ad in the Sunday paper. And I was like, right, but I sent you this and you said, perfect. And then it was like this, like, and they're like, I said, I want an ad in that paper. And I was like, Yes. I have the receipts that sit, we can see exactly. And it was like, I was trying to go back and I remember like just freaking out. Like I've just spent like $800 that wasn't supposed to be sent. And like what I'm spent and like, like what, what am I going to do? Like, are they're, they're clearly upset. It wasn't in the paper. Like what are, how are we going to like make good this or whatever? Right. And like, I'm trying to explain it all to my, uh, my, the director of marketing, this guy named Dave at the time. And I was just like, so what happened was this happened. And then like, they thought I meant this. And I thought they said that. And I talked to Eugene and Eugene told me this and like, and it was like this like convoluted, like spaghetti mess. And he was like, just none of that matters. Like, you know, like, just whatever. Just like stop. None of that matters. Just tell them we're we'll just 
buy another ad with our own money and apologize for the rest of it. And it's just like, no, but they, they're wrong. And he's like, doesn't matter. Just do this. And I like went back and I was like, you know, I was like, oh my God, it absolutely matters. You know, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you know, matters right to now, me. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, geez, it matters to me. And I like so then I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, what if I it was like, we have some fun set aside for stuff like this. What if we just buy you an ad next Sunday? And they're like, that sounds perfect. Thank you so much for clearing this up. And I was like, man, that worked so well. Like, <laughs> and it was just like, it was like, it was the thing was, it was like, Dave was right. Like none of the rest of it mattered. None of the convoluted mess that had brought me to the situation, no matter how much sense it made and how much like ups and downs and like, no matter how justified it actually was like, it actually didn't matter. All that mattered was like, there was like one single line to the solution to the problem. And I did that and it worked. And it was like such a like amazing lesson moving forward. I thought for, uh, for me where it was just like there are so many times where it just seems like if any time and I've been able to recognize it a lot where people will like I'll be listening to someone say like this whole myriad of reasons and uh, rationales and like misunderstandings that led them to a certain things and it's just like I, I can like recognize that it's like all that stuff is just like you're it's all just like a tangled mess that is getting in your way of seeing the truth which is just like move past it or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like the big question like, cuz I used to always think about like headphone wires, you know, yeah. it's like it's like headphone wires before, you know, like the 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 time of the earbud where they were just where you were more at risk of losing them entirely was like if you gently set a set of like headphones on your desk when yeah. you returned, it would appear as though somebody was attempting to make like a rubber band ball out of them right, yeah. by making as many knots, you know, separately as human possible right and you'd be like how on earth did they get this tangled up it you know there's only one foot of like d- d- strands here for where the buds are even not connected to each other yes yes yeah um and, and i do think you're right because i think that's because i think what you're trying to say is almost like it's it's almost like like I mean, this is this is a bad example, but but maybe possibly also like a like a way to demonstrate it is that like in your mind, you think that the headphones won't work again unless you methodically go through and like untangle everything. But if you plug the headphone jack into your old iPhone or iPod and then you put the earbuds into your ear, music will still come out of it. Right. Like, you know, it's like all the all the tangles aside. It's like there's probably like a like a quick slash way where it's like, okay, let's take away all the uh, all the like the the minutia out of the equation. It's like, and, yes. and just get down to like the absolute like what is important to them what are we capable of doing solve that right let's it's like let, you know we don't need to resolve like the he said she said exactly you know, like it's like rest. yeah you don't need to necessarily <clears throat> go back and like pick apart and it's like it's like this belief that you can't move forward unless you resolve the 1000 little strings that got you to the point you're at like it feels like it'll be impossible but it's like that's just not true like you know what like it doesn't matter how many weird roads and what maze we went through to get to this point like we don't need to argue about the way we got here because where we want to go is there and there's just one road there and we can just take it right you know yeah 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 um so i don't know i've i've I feel like it, it, it was like a weird thing that happened and it's like I look back and it's like I you know I, I used to think about it It was like I like I literally had such like receipts you know on the situation it was like they re- I sent them a thing and they said perfect and it was like I'm right I'm right I know I'm right because I have it it's right here like there it is and it's like that didn't matter. <laughs> You know? Right, right, right. That didn't matter. It's like yes. that, it didn't. And it's like it didn't matter because that wasn't actually was what what was important. Right, you know? right. No, and, and it's interesting because I think that like I had a I had a similar like formative experience that I, I may have told in the pot before, but I'm gonna do it again anyway. Um, which is I had an instance where once upon a time I was in Dallas, Texas, doing this big aquarium show, and the crew that I was working with uh, was like known for having some of just like the most jaw dropping and incredible like exhibits that 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 like anybody would do at this type of thing yeah. and, and this is like you know the creme de la creme of people in this particular field so right like but like this booth that i was working for and working with would like win the blue ribbon for like the most impressive display right and they these guys were i mean they were machines like none other mm-hmm. you know like they all knew their stuff inside out they were all they like every single one of the crew could be like a carpenter 
on their own or, you know, like a, like a machinist or something like they, they all know the ins and outs of like so many different things, all of the different tools, the complete biology and chemistry of like the aquarium systems that we're doing. And I was basically there to like do grunt work. Yeah. And the guy that I was working with was at like the very top of the food chain. And he is the one who had like brought me out because we were doing some other projects together and he needed me to like basically start learning so I could right. like have some of these skills when he needed to call on me. And so the, the thing that happened was uh, like we got there and we had this like 500 gallon display that we're getting ready to set up in a remote location, which a 500 gallon display is ridiculously hard to install. Like when you're like at a permanent location, yeah, Yeah. at a permanent location and not something that's going to be set up for like five and a half days. Right. You know, and the thing that we needed because they were able to build the, uh, these really incredible aquariums that were on wheels so that they could put them on the back of a trailer. And then basically like on these like super heavy duty casters, they would like roll them into the event center from like, you know, the, the, the loading dock or whatever, right. Where we would then bring them to the resting location and essentially like try to drop them into place so that they would, you know, be wherever. Um, and what we needed was just this like 30 inch wide, piece of two by four yeah and like the the guy that was there was like ben go find me a 30 inch piece of wood and you know it's like we're we're in a an event center that's like a mile long right you know it's like the building is a mile long it, right. it is huge to try to get anywhere and i'm like i don't have a car i don't have any money i don't have any way of getting anywhere like it's not like i can just like run to lowe's and like you know yeah. have them cut me a board or something and come back and like it's i think it was like one of those situations where it's like you know i could have explained to the guy who asked me to do this all the complicated things that i was going to have to do like in order to get it and instead i just looked at him and was like all right <laughs> you yeah. know and it was like okay gotta find wood you know and so then i mean then it just becomes like a game it's yeah. like somewhere inside of this building there is wood absolutely i mean that's an absolute truth of any large venue for sure it's like yeah yeah, you know what they've had enough things in and out like there's spare wood about (laughs) yes yes and then then it's just a matter of like coming back with it and he and he didn't want to know how i did it what all i had to go through to do it like it's like one of these things where it's like it's like i I, like i know you went on a journey like i and and maybe this is like part of like experience in the world and stuff like that Mm -hmm. it's like at some point in time i also had to go find wood you know right Um, Uh, And and at some point in time I did and I came back with it. Uh, But but I do think this was like one of those like challenges to me where I was like at the time I had no idea how I was going to solve. Right. Like you you hadn't been in big venues before. It was like, you know, what do you mean? Find wood. What's not just laying around. Yes. Yeah. It's not like there's a tree over there or something. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but anyway, I I eventually uh, I took one. I took a a standard hammer from our toolbox and ended up finding a couple of pallets leaned against some dumpsters outside of the building. Nice. And I just wailed on them until they until they broke free nice and i came back with my my perfectly cut 30 inch strip of wood nice yeah. and, they, and he was like great thank you yeah and then and that was it it was like don't you want to hear how i got it like <laughs> right it's like as well as he's like ben i need you to go get me this piece of wood and it's like do you have any it's like you're already wasting my time like yeah. yes yes that's yeah. exactly it it's like, like please like, do not ask questions and when don't. you return please don't tell me what happened right like, like <laughs> i don't care i just need the wood like it's like, how you got it irrelevant the irrelevant. fact is we need it and that's that yes you, yeah. you are effectively making a very large shim like yeah which like if you've ever like installed like a like a dresser or something in your home and you need to be level like we needed one of those but for an aquarium that was going to weigh how much is 500 times eight pounds per gallon like four thousand yeah yeah four thousand pounds so we needed a shim for a four thousand pound thing Hmm, that's not counting the glass or the cabinetry right so probably like five thousand two hundred and eighty pounds that's that's how many feet are in a mile wow which is how big the building was got it full circle Woo! nailed it thanks Thanks. very good very good well i'm glad you found some wood thanks man thanks yeah Yeah, it was it was it was quite the journey but i think it's it i feel like it's like your thing but it's in reverse because it's just it's it's like all all of the other bits it's sort of like you you've got like point a to point b and there's distance that exists in between those two things and when it really comes down to it it's like it's almost the most important thing in the world to just just ignore the distance in between points A and point right, B. Right. When it comes to these specific things, like this is this is like where the journey is not the destination. The destination is the destination. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is that 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 is what what a great that is so it. You know, it's like so like in life and whenever you're doing so many things, like the journey ends up being the destination. And it's like sometimes like at work, like the destination is just the destination. <laughs> like just get it done. Like you just need the yeah, outcome. It's like yeah, yeah, I don't need to know the entire journey of how you got from here to there you know we're not making like an animated movie over here right i'm sending an email you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh man. But, but it's like, but like, it's one of those things that I think it's like, you have to like override your senses because probably a lot of like what happens when you're growing up or the basic arguments you've been in at this, like up until this stage of life, you know, it's like whether you've got like siblings or parents or friends who you're arguing with or significant others and like, you know, middle school, high school, college, whatever the case may be. It's like the, he said, she said like form of like, uh, like the, the judicial system of social laws yeah. is, is so vital. Yeah. You know, it's like, but like, it's like, I think you get there. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to spitball some theory here. Okay. Let's like, it. you know let's what, as we're talking about this, it's reminding me a lot of like, just like parenting, like my, my uh, three boys yeah. at the same time. It's just like, sometimes there's just a big loud smack in the other room and you don't really know what happened, but suddenly a bunch of people are crying and you know what, you know what, when I walk in there, I don't care what happened. Yeah. There's no, he said, he said, she said, it's like, whatever, just everyone apologize we're you know this game's over right like it right. doesn't it doesn't really matter what transpired we've clearly gotten too rowdy doing whatever we're doing so this is dissolved now right like no amount of like no but i was doing this and then that and then because he said this i went over there but i went over there and i didn't know that nate didn't want me to touch that and it's like none of that matters like right, i don't right. care right like we're just pfft. it's so funny clean on the, slate it's so funny on this side of the spectrum though because like these are like the injustices that i like i, I always felt like i remembered as a kid where it was like oh that was so unfair no, how that see, got handled. I think, I, but exactly. But I think what happens, this is, this is the rest of the theory is that like when you're a kid, of course your parents are already on the other, 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 your parents are on the other end and they don't care because right. like they just want you to stop like roughhousing and causing trouble. Right. And it's like, like to you, there was a lot of nuance in that situation. But what happens is you grew up in a high school and suddenly like you're having to navigate all these situations and there aren't parents that just be like, doesn't matter. Right. Like, so guess what? You hash it out into the nitty gritty detail and there is gossip and there is like people. He said, she said, who's right, who's wrong. And then it just becomes like and that, like you lose sight of like that. The fact that your parents were just like correct in erasing that. Right. right. And you get in there and you're like, no, this is how things should be. This is how I always wanted things to be handled. And now it is. And this is the appropriate way. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's actually extremely funny because I feel like, you know, you and I both watch like, like some amount of like reality TV related dating shows type stuff. So the, the most like recent one is uh, a show called love is blind on Netflix that I think we've both watched all the way. Yes. Possibly. Yes. Confirmed. It's, it's funny to me because I, I think you witness this happen sometimes like inside of like the arguments amongst people on these like reality dating shows where like they will be like clearly somebody is upset they will have like made their point as like how they're upset and they'll basically like be going back and forth with whatever discourse is happening and and on some level i almost like i think part of what i like about watching these shows is that it's almost like i'm like i don't typically experience fights at the level of like dramatic nature that the people inside of the shows are right. And so for me, sometimes it's almost like I'm like studiously watching how people like engage in conflict. Right. Like, like I, I know that that potentially sounds wild, but I think like that is the appeal to me of these like dating shows and stuff is that like, it's like I'm getting to like see how people behave inside of like the, the pressure cooker that is like the situation they've been like subjected to. Yeah. Because it, it makes a lot of like the, the interactions elevated, you know, because the, that elevated interaction is what ends up grabbing people for like TV purposes. But I also feel like it's probably like, it's almost like adding like, salt to food it, it's basically making the food taste more like what the food tastes like but you're getting to see it on an exaggerated scale mm-hmm. Is, are you following everything i'm saying so far yeah okay so I feel like as we're describing all this, one of the things that I've witnessed in a lot of the shows is that like they'll start arguing about one thing or another and then somebody will be able to like dismiss like, oh, that was just a misunderstanding. And then like the person's like, well, I'm still mad. So hold on, let me back up a few steps. Okay, this was the next thing I was mad at. Now, what about this though? (laughs) You know, and it's almost like, it's like the person may have been able to resolve like problem you know, number a, right. But, and then it's sort of like, Oh, problem number a wasn't a problem. Okay. Well then I'm, let me backtrack to problem number B. Like I was saying, right. And it's like, Oh, that wasn't okay. Problem number C, you know, yeah, and it's, it's like, like, what are you actually mad about? Right. Or so often the other thing that'll happen is they'll, they'll be, arg- they'll start arguing because of one thing, but then like three minutes later, they're more like arguing about the way in which the argument is being had. Yes. And yep. that's always like a, you just need to stop. Like no, nothing is happening now. You're resolving nothing. No, nobody is. 
is ever yeah. like at their best inside of like you know the the heat of an argument yeah um this this always goes back to like one of those things like where the the, the contemplation has literally crossed my mind before like if Ali and I ever have like a disagreement about something where I'm like should we go into separate rooms and text each other and sometimes it's silly because I'm like I go back to like an era of like the like the breakup text you know it was like such a such a um informal and kind of like condescending or disrespectful way to like break up with somebody I was like you can at least say it to their face right and you can't even brave enough to like like come and and, and face me for this type mm-hmm. of thing or whatever um but I feel like at, sometimes I'm like you know when I was going through some of these stages, I like, you know, I was in high school or something. If I was dating somebody who went to a different school, it was like, we didn't really have the ability to be face to face. Like our primary yeah. me- like way of communicating was through text messages. But a lot of times, like I would get a text and I'm like, Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay. All right. Let me send a draft. Hang on. Yeah. Okay. And I'll yeah, edit it a couple times. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a lot more rational. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, it's like, right. It's like, you know, so what you end up doing is it's like, it's like, you know, you have your knee jerk reaction where it's like, like, let's just say hypothetically, you're like, you are face to face. It's like your knee jerk reaction is just immediately available because they're right there. Right. Like, but, yeah. Cause they watch it happen because they watch it happen. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, it's like sometimes I'm like, I'm like, man, was I more productive at like conflict resolution through text because it actually gave me a minute to like, like take a few steps back reconvene you know sort of like calm down and be like okay we got this you know yeah now now move forward right yeah i have no idea but uh it's it, it feels like it could be a thing it could be could be yeah might might help to just be like okay before i say anything let me just like think about it more yeah which is like more acceptable in like text-based communication rather than like when someone says something to your meeting you're like just quiet for three minutes <laughs> yeah that's yeah. my problem is that in arguments it takes me for i mean alice would attest to this instantly yeah but like like we, if we're if we're inside of an argument i will just go silent yeah for like for a long time you know like and i'm just sitting there and i'm like i'm just all I'm doing is I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to respond with what, like with my first thought, like, right? First thought almost certainly is wrong. Um, so let me, let me sit and wait. And so it ends up being like the most hilarious thing to probably like, we would be terrible for reality TV because it's mm-hmm. mostly just us sitting there in, in absolute si- silence for like long stretches of time. Right. I mean, they could just edit you to look like you were responding off the cuff. You they, know, they probably yeah. would. So here's my question though. So okay. with your event promoter though, this is the type of thing like where we live in the age of emails. Yeah. Where, like you had the time to be like what you said perfect right you know like right. so it's like um, imagine this is like 1970 instead of like like 2000 like 14 or something right and it's sort of like you guys are meeting at like you know a restaurant to be like hey what up sunday paper didn't see it you know yeah it's like it's like yeah because you told me it's like no i didn't it's like right. you said perfect right exactly <laughs> like it's those like, were your words right right right. yeah so m- more more spaced out communication is, is is there is there a world where that's better i i don't know i mean even in my situation even when i could prove it it didn't matter to them <laughs> no of course not yeah. yeah that's the thing and like sometimes it just doesn't matter right you know but um but either which way i mean it was like you even had the ability like i was talking about like putting like my drafts in my phone or whatever for my response yeah like this was like you literally went to like a whole other person to be like hey what do i do this is right. this is ridiculous right it's like not ridiculous just th- this here you go i've solved right give them what they want <laughs> right it's like okay Oh, yeah. All right, felt like maybe we should have served some justice, uh, and that yeah. I should have been due some apologies <laughs> right. and some, you know, like, um, you know, it was just like, yeah, that does not, ha- it's not a, that's not how it's going to work. <laughs> right, right. So right. the question is because I, this could take me back to like that Zygarnik effect I've I've talked a lot about mm-hmm. lately, like where you get like closure to the situation. Did you ever feel like after the fact? Because this would be an interesting one. Like, did you ever have like any fuel that you didn't get to burn off by by not saying or or getting justice for that perfect email? you know and i'm saying perfect like the like in air quotes because that's what the guy said he confirmed this is perfect right this this solution you've sent me like did you ever feel like the the door didn't get closed on that or did you feel like once someone else had intervened and provided this mechanism to solve the problem that you were like okay let's solve the problem but i'm still mad no i was i was completely good you were completely good yeah, yeah. so you were just able to like like okay good yep there we go right yes if they're good then i'm good right basically yeah. bygones be bygones right like i'd rather move forward than continue to deal with it or something you know right 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 okay that sounds good that sounds good yeah. then so okay let's then then we'll go again hypothetically so now there's a gathering of the troops yeah you're you're at like a like a local uh, like like Jerry Seinfeld from uh, the B movie has yeah. come into town. He's right. done his performance. Where most likely, I assume he's dressed like a bee. 
Yeah, um, probably doing, doing bee in impersonations. Mostly bee puns. Yeah. yeah, like how to harvest honey type situations. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the, just Jerry Sideboard in a bee suit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So afterwards, all the people who have been involved with the situation, you go. You're you're at like a like a bar where there's like like small small plates and in beverages and and the whatnot. You and you and uh, Senor Perfect are are right. you are you like what up, man? How are you? So glad we were able to solve that Sunday paper thing. Yes, that's how it would be. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You seem you seem like you think I was leading you down a path where that's not how I thought you would respond. Uh, well, I, that is, I feel like that's what you were asking. Is is that how I would respond? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah. so you you would just be good though. Just I would be just good. be good. Okay, good. Yeah, good, good, good. I mean, there were there were promote. I mean, uh, frequently there are promoters where they would just like annoy you with their requests and stuff, but then you meet them in person and be like, "What's up? We've done so many shows together. Ha ha, we're such good friends." And it was like I, you know, like I I I would see them as like more like friendly more like more like friends and it was like of course it was like it was sort of understood that within the context of like when we're working that like there are forces acting on me and there's forces acting on you and if you're annoyed about this then whatever that that's such a good point to bring up because it's true it's like everybody who's ever inside of like their environment it's like you always you're always and everybody is aware of all of the other factors that are involved yeah like it's so it's like it's sort of like the um you know like if if like when somebody like you know asks to like talk to a manager or whatever it's like on some level it's almost like you you know the person in front of you even though like all of your frustration might be at that particular person it's almost like it's like there's nothing that person can actually do yeah which is which is for the most part like is how i dial all all of it back all the time and always it's like i know this has nothing to do with you they like you are not permitted to to do whatever it is that i was asking right of, of, of this situation or right thing so it's like i will not hold that against you because right. i know if you could help me you probably would help me because i would say yeah on the flip side there were there were certain promoters where i would just be like they would be the worst and they would be very like petty he said she said like they would not cut through it and it would be like you know and, and then it was the worst it was like i don't want to work here anymore because it's like it's like stressing me out at all times kind of things yeah yeah that can be yeah. very exhausting so yeah. there there were situations and so i don't know that that also i think is the it's the same i think it's the same lesson it's like we had this one person uh, i it's like yeah where i could go i could go talk to my manager and they were just like nope just do this pff, fixed and then you'd have other people where it'd just be like no i'm going to continue to harp on you for all these tiny little misdeeds you've done for the end of time to be like I'm going to need you to stop doing that because <laughs> the show's over. Yeah. Yeah. The show's over. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld went back to the yeah. hive, man. We're fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, I don't know. I don't know how we totally got here, but that was my story. This is this is the uh, the Carlin Brothers uh uh, course on conflict resolution course on conflict resolution thank yeah. you for attending uh there will be gift bags at the door right possibly yeah whichever yeah. door that you're at hopefully although may- maybe now somebody is like like exiting a restaurant and there's like a to-go bag or something and they're like well, that's the gift bag that that's ben is almost definitely it. talking about i'll just grab it I'm for sorry. myself <laughs> so unfortunately i just contributed to like burrito theft so that's my bad oh my gosh it th- whenever i to go order chipotle and like just do like the online order and you just walk up and like you make no contact with anyone in the store at all. You just walk up and you check the receipt on the little shelf and you take your food. I'm always like anyone could just take this at any time. It's like if you really wanted to, you could just walk into any Chipotle ever, walk up, grab a bag, leave. Mystery burrito. You're welcome. Mystery burrito. It's, yeah, like it, it, no it, one would stop you. No one. I'm always feels. I always feel like I'm. I, I always feel like I'm stealing. And I'm like, even though I already paid for the food, and I'm uh, just. This is mine. Right. Right. It has know? my name on it. it has right my here. name on it. If you were to check me, I'm always like. Okay, someone that I, like my opinion, like even though I paid for it and I ordered it and it has my name on it, I'm like everyone, everyone watching thinks I'm stealing. Like, yeah, you know I could prove that I'm not, but guaranteed they all think I am. Yeah, they, yeah. they think I am. Go on, go on worst case. Yeah. yeah, the thing that I find to be hilarious about this is the frequency at which I do it, and then like I like pick up my bag and I will wait for someone to come over, and I'm like I just want to let you know I was just picking up my bag or whatever, and they're like yeah okay, <laughs> and I'm like I should I it was right of me to tell you that I was doing that right like instead of just walking out the door They're it, like we have a line <laughs> it reminds me of back in the day i feel like somebody at some point in time pointed out to me the the prospect of like pulling into and i'm not recommending anybody do this but it was like pulling into uh like like a hotel that had like a continental breakfast and just walking in as if you were a guest oh. and <laughs> consuming the continental breakfast and then leaving and it's like i mean that would be stealing at that point in time because it's usually like included 
included in the cost of the room. But yeah. I, rem- I remember somebody saying that for the first time and I was like, you could you could do that, right? right. Like, like they're like, like I don't know, yeah, how <laughs> aware they are of who every single guest in the hotel is at any moment. I know. I I, I feel like I need to ask someone who works at a hotel. I'm like, does does this happen, or how e- easy is it to spot? Right. You know, because yeah. it's like that's like one of those where you think that you're just like blending into the crowd, but the people who work there know a lot more what to look for than you realize they're aware of. Right. You yeah. Know? yeah. I I sus well I suspect if you. Just just did it like once at a hotel like they would never know and if you came in like frequently they'd be like hey i recognize you <laughs> that's the, that's the yeah. other thing too yeah, yeah yeah you you think the people working behind the counter are just a myriad of like like strangers who would never recognize you ever again but this is uh, this is funny because i used to date a girl who drove a pink car yeah and it was a funny like a like a bright pink car. bright pink yes. yeah like in the yeah like pepto bismol colored yes and it was one of those really funny things where it was incredible to me the frequency at which we would pull up at something and she's like and people would say to her i see your car everywhere right and i was sort of like what are the odds of you seeing her car everywhere and it's like it's like the thing is is that you probably see a lot of the cars that you pass like to and from on your like way to work on your way to school on your way to like the gym you go to or your favorite restaurant or something it's like the reason people remember this car is because it was so pink right exactly yeah it's like i probably see the same navy blue minivan and black sedan and silver you know hyundai every single day and exactly. it's like i'm completely unaware of it because it all just blends together exactly exactly yeah. but if you're if you're working at the hotel and you're all of a sudden discovering like wait a second this kid he's here a lot yeah i've never checked him in before you know it's like that's that's where it's like you know the, the right. little the little like light bulb goes up it's mm-hmm. like wait a second wait right. a second because like you could you could probably assume that like if the front desk person has changed like well obviously the new person doesn't know right because they wouldn't they be the wouldn't one have checked, checked me in anyway right. yeah. yeah or even even if it hadn't it could have just been, you, they would just assume someone else had checked you in the night before how memorable was i anyway how memorable were you anyway exactly yeah. exactly yeah. okay Mm-hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question to leave on. I think. Yeah. yeah. How memorable are you? This is something <laughs> that's like sometimes when I'm like, like going to book a room for a hotel, it'll be like, how many guests will be in the room or whatever, and it's just like, you know, like if it was like me and Beth staying in a room or something, you know, it's like because if you say two, it's going to cost more than if it costs one, right? You know, but it's like. We're just, we only need one bed, you know, right? It's right, like right. the, if there's a bed and it's like, well, if I just say one, how are we like, you know, I, this is, you know what I mean? You're right. You're right. You know, no, I've, I've had this before as well, where like a lot of times I'm like, if I change it to two, is it going to be more expensive? Like, are you charging me per person? Because the, like the two of us can sleep in that one bed that one person can sleep in just as well. Right. You know, so it's like, should there be an extra charge for that other person? Um, yeah. Or like Airbnb is like maximum of like seven people. And I'm like, but how are you going to know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, so, so brother-in-law Mike does some, some Airbnb type stuff and yeah. it, it is interesting to like hear the stories from the hosts perspective Mm -hmm. because I've always been the same way I'm sort of like like a lot of times I'll even like check out and I'm like oh my gosh should I even say how many people were in my party because it's like there's like six bedrooms in this house so it's like surely it won't matter if I'm traveling with like six couples because like there's plenty of room to go around but I may have just said one person was staying at the six person house right yeah or this the six bedroom house it's like but obviously I wouldn't come and stay at this big of a house by myself right (laughs) does that that go without saying should I let them know right um so maybe I should I don't know yeah so that's what I'm like learning from like being on the other side of it right that is like i know it's like it's like one of those things where it's just like if like it doesn't cost them any more for me if like you know it like from it from the customer end you're like if i if i say one what i'm going to get is a, a room with a bed and a tv and if i say two what i'm going to get from them is a room with a bed and a tv but it will cost more because so it doesn't feel like I'm getting any more for saying two, but it is costing me more. So like what it, it feels like you're being taken advantage of that, in some way, but it's like I said, but like, but then I'm sure on there and they're like, yeah, but that's twice as many showers and twice as many people who ate the food at the continental breakfast. That's and, a good point. Too. You know, it's like yeah. there, there probably are considerations on their end. Right. And I imagine you're still coming out short on your end. Because, yeah. But whatever. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I, I don't even know that it's always the case 
staystays at a hotel that you do get booked. I don't know yeah, either. This yeah. is like, yeah, but yeah, just the example. There you go. Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, as ever, if you have any feedback for the show, you can send it on over to popcornculturepod at gmail.com. Or if you would like to support the show, we would super appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You can do so by heading on over to patreon.com slash popcornculture, where we have a variety of fun and cool tiers for you to explore and check out. One of the one of the ones in particular would be after the final pop. It's just like an extra, it's extra content. So if you are like, man, I have caught up on the pop or I want to hear them talk about that more or just want to hear them talk about more random stuff. Um, that is like an extra 15 to 20 minutes we do every single week. Even if you just sign up for a single month, you get access to the entire back catalog so you can go through and just kind of like tune in to all the things that we've said uh, behind the scenes throughout the years. So yeah. Lots and lots available there. So patreon.com slash popcorn culture. But otherwise, until next time, pop, pop. Pop.